Hello, everyone. My pod posse. It's florally design time from the floor up with your host. That's me, Lindsay the Sager. And I have the best interview today because it's with my bestie and fellow realtor, Isabel Abel. Everybody give it up for Isabel Abel. Hey. Hey. Hi, I'm Lindsay Wilson, and you're watching the Design Time from the Floor Up video podcast. Right Isabel is a right realtor back. that, wait, this is the best part. <laughs> Isabel is a realtor that works for Terra Nova Global, Global, who is aligned with Compass Realty. Hi. That's right. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, good. Um, you know, you've been sending me the podcast, um, We Can Do Hard Things. And if Glennon Doyle is going to call her podcast listeners her pod squad, I'm going to call ours the pod posse. I got it. Just to be oh, clear. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Iz, you look beautiful because uh, the last time I saw you, we were in our jammies. We were. More on that in a sec, but I just have to tell you where I am because it's going to set the stage for what we're going to maybe talk about today. I am in the childhood bedroom that I started sleeping in in Atlantic Beach, North Carolina in 1981 when I was six years old. This condo has been in my family for obviously 40 Six years. And um, no, that's not right. How old am I? I'm 47. 47 minus six is 41. So it's been in the family for 41 years. And the reason why I'm here is because not only have I survived COVID, I had it for two weeks. It was terrible. I lost my taste and smell. It was the first time I've got it in two and a half years. But my darling, adorable, supportive, sexy husband, first he went to Orlando for a convention, leaving me with both children for like three days. But when he came back, that's when I started feeling bad. And he had to go on this annual fishing trip that he's been going on for 35 years. Fine. I don't want to ruin the tradition. Go. Then last weekend... For like the third weekend, he has to go hunting for three days. <laughs> so when he comes back, I'm like, that's it. My turn. I've had it. I want to stay married to you, so I'm going to leave you for three days. And here I am. Awesome. Good for you. But guess what? But it's not over yet. Okay. So just when you're driving three hours to the beach and you're thinking about being by yourself, taking a shower, nobody's asking you for anything, I get here for 40 years. The spare key has been in the utility closet where the washer and dryer is. It's 7.30 at night. I've just driven through darkness and rain. I got here and the door is locked for the first time in 40 years. There's no key. There's nobody here. Our friends down the street do not have the key. I went to the security office where there's a security guy sitting there with his legs up on the desk, watching TV. Can you let me in? Are you my mother? <laughs> he comes all the way over. He has like five keys. None of them work. I'm calling my dad. I'm calling my aunt. They're the ones that know where the keys are. Why in 40 years is this locked? Oh my God. So I had to call a locksmith who took an hour to come to me and charged me a hundred dollars to get into my stupid condo. <laughs> That's what you get for leaving your husband and your kids. No, I'm kidding. Right? I'm, I'm kidding. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> like nothing works out perfectly. Yeah. And so then this morning I wake up. I've had a beautiful night's nice sleep. I'm going to go get my oil changed at Jeep here because I made the appointment here. As I'm going over the bridge to get into the city, Lionel Richie, um, I'm easy like Sunday morning. That's my song. Everybody knows that's my song. That comes on. And then while I'm in the parking lot talking to the car salesman about what my next Jeep is going to be in a few years, just to be ahead of schedule, um, I found not one, not two, not three, but seven lucky pennies heads up in the parking lot. Wow. They're all right here in my pocket. Look at this. 
I mean, talk about luck. That's amazing. Love it. That's a turnaround. Oh, that's, a, that's a big turnaround from the night before. Well done. Seriously. Like, I think the universe, God, my friends and family, my husband, my children are looking out for me. The Jeep or dealer. more importantly, you didn't let that derail you. You did what you had to do. You got the locksmith. You got in there uh, and you started your weekend. You know, but more importantly, kudos well, to you for that. Well, what you just said, thank you. You're so supportive as my friend. You always have been. But that is such an important thing about self-care. We as women, we need to empower each other. We need to be strong and stand by each other. I think my dad is worried. Like he called me maybe seven times today. Like we're thinking about you. Are you okay? And like when I pulled out of the <laughs> driveway yesterday, when I dropped off, what I had to get something to bring over to the beef house. He's like, are you sure you're doing the right thing? I'm like, dad, he's so worried because this is my third husband and he officiated the wedding and he's probably like, not going to do this again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to explain to our pod posse and to my parents and to everyone, I am leaving to take this time to myself so that I don't get divorced again. That's absolutely true. Um, I'm going to look in all the shops here, the consignment shops, the beautiful furniture stores that I never get to take advantage of. I'm going to go back to like doing what I want to do because there's so much going on when we have children and jobs and husbands and dogs and apartments and renovations and going to the beach and groceries and planning dinner and fixing dinner and all the things that we need to remember our authentic selves and get back to that place and do what we love. Totally. I mean, you know what I call that, right? The soup. So, um, and you know, I, know, I did I love not. That. Explain it. You talk. I'm, I'm I tired did of not, Well, talk. I didn't do what you did when I was in your shoes. And, you know, if I could go back, I, I didn't do it. I just stayed the martyr and, and just, you know, let everybody just take advantage of me. And I didn't take time for self-care. Um, only now when I'm an empty nester and divorced and all the things, am I realizing how important it is and how, but it was less of a thing back then. I think people are more aware now, but still it's so important. Yeah. And also, I guess the roles have changed, which is so important. True. Like True. I can say you do your thing, but also I'm going to do my thing because I let you do your thing. And I don't want to say let, because it's supposed to be like this partnership. I'm not letting him go. I want You're him to go. Supporting him in his, you know, fun. Right. Yeah. But I just don't want anybody to be worried. Like if I say I'm going to have a weekend by myself, I I want people to understand how important that is to take. Yes. And that everybody listening right now should schedule in their calendar, take a weekend for yourself. Totally. Yep. And it all started with me having a girls' night with you. So and fun. I never get to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I came over to Isabel's, Isabel's house and we had pizza and wine. And I promised her that the next morning, I swear, if I could just drink and eat first, the next morning I will get to work. But she has a big, beautiful house with the most beautiful things to use. And we staged the crap out of it for like four hours in our jammies. Yeah, not we, you, but I was I was supporting I was running around taking orders. It was awesome. Well, look at how cool this mirror situation for now. This is why I had to sit here. And, you know, and also part of self-care is also surrounding yourself with things you love, not just having baby stuff everywhere, which a lot of people do. And I did that too. And then you get resentful. So I know that's hard when you're in the soup and you can't have you can't just have a room but try to have a corner if not a room where it's just about you and things you love and that's what we were doing for you we were making you got the most amazing I'm sorry to say but it's a splurge it's an expensive joy bird two-person loungy couch yeah and like I say sofa just to be like a, a, a correct decorator because sofas are like a beautiful, elegant, longer sofa, but this is like a cozy couch. And it was so amazing. And we just had to incorporate Isabel's once 
children's bonus room filled with puzzles and games and toys and kid crap. And we took all that out and we just told a story on the built-ins all about Isabel and made it her space. Finally! So awesome. And I was just sitting in there before this podcast, just chilling and just hanging in there surrounded by all the things. And it was so amazing. Just that little shit. I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so yeah. glad. And it was just a little tweak on my part. We didn't buy anything. No. We didn't change the paint. No. We just shopped your home, like I like to say, mm-hmm. and we put things where they're supposed to go. Yeah. And that yeah. is also about self-care. Totally. If you totally. are surrounded by things that make you sad, like that little, like your grandmother's little hand. <laughs> This is so funny, you guys. I have to tell you about this. Is it okay? Is anybody that you care about going to be watching this in? Absolutely. Oh, my God. So, oh, my God. oh, they are going to be watching this? Oh, no, no, are no. You... And they won't okay. care. It's fine. Okay. Fine. So there's just like this little like Ron, copper. I mean, Ron. clearly back in the teens, 19 teens, let's just say. Oh, my God. Making bronze hands was a thing, I guess. But it looks yeah. like this. Yeah, it looks like a claw, it's and when it, it's either like this or it's like this. It's terrible. Yeah, and it's like yeah. this big. And I found this like on her built-ins on either side of her beautiful fireplace slash mantle, and I'm like, um, should we incorporate this? And she's like, no, it freaks me out. Just put it somewhere <laughs> where I know it's there, but I can't see it. So I'm like, Click. I'm just gonna put it behind this frame. Yeah, perfect. But it, but but it took someone to come into your house to tell you, get this shit out of here. You don't need to be surrounded by this just because it's your grandmother's and you're like, I can't get rid of her hand the way you can't throw away a Bible. Right, right. Um, right. Because you can't. Has anybody ever thrown away a Bible? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Let me know if you have, because that's ridiculous. (laughs) Um, But you have to get, it, it takes a friend and maybe you have a friend with benefit like me with, you know, designer skills, um, but you need to surround yourself with things that make you happy Absolutely. or else it's every single time you walk into that room or past that picture that your mother gave you that you hated or your mother-in-law, you know how we like have to use things that our mother-in-law gave us. Yeah. Sorry, Peggy. I love you. I love, I love everything that you've given me, Peggy. That's my mother-in-law. If she ever watches this, but there are things that you have been given and you don't need to use them if it doesn't make you happy. No, for sure. For sure. And that's the, number that's the magic of you. Five. That's your special skill. And no, it's awesome. I, I've, there's been a shift in energy in this house. And it's not like, you know, it's not like I was here. My kids are in college or one's in New York launched. The other one's in college in California. But, you know, now the house is still them. They still have their rooms. They have all their things. But the rest of the house is no longer, you know. Patrick's workout room and the kids' bonus room, and I've, I know. I've taken, taken, reclaimed it. I've reclaimed it. What would be like your self-indulgent? Now I'm an empty nester. I'm gonna do whatever the f I want to do. I hate it when people say f. We should just say fuck because that's what we mean to say. Yeah, it's okay yeah. to say it. Yeah, on this podcast. Yeah. Um. You know that joy bird was it? Like it's what it is. Is it's giving me permission when I want to take a rest or a break. That's why I didn't want anything work related in that room. Um, I can just go sit there and be surrounded by yeah. things that make me happy. And I can watch TV or not. I can read. I can do things that make me happy or sleep. Um, I mean, I bought it as a perfect oh, nap. Cap. Totally. I can yeah. sleep in that. So yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I think that as mothers and wives and working women, we can say, uh, let's change this word around. I heard this the other day. This is not from, this is not me, but I'm, I'm playing it forward and telling everybody what I heard. Instead of the word, I deserve this. What if we said, I've earned this? Yeah, true. Because you have, you earned that expensive piece of furniture. It makes you so happy. Now that we've made it like cohesive with the rest of that room, I'm so excited that I had something to do with making you feel that good. Right. And to be clear, I think we don't also want to, you know, self-care is not just about 
buying Mater furniture. Material, <laughs> material stuff or lighting a candle or taking a bubble bath. It's also about figuring out what you need to shift your energy and to, to, you know, be in a better place for yourself. It's not just about stuff. Cause if you're miserable and you go light a candle, that candle is not going to help you. So you, ha- <laughs> you, ha- you- <laughs> Sorry, but um, so you have to figure out what, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of going inward, I think is more, is an important part of self care as well. Not just the outward stuff, which does help. Um, I know that you have like your own Pilates studio in your home because I know you and I was, I'm in your home. And I think that that is another way to take care of yourself. You have got to release these crazy pre, during, post menopausal fascia that is in our body that we need to release. Yeah, true. You got to like... You got to get it out. You got to do yoga. You got to do Pilates. You have to have a massage. Yeah. Whatever works. I mean, yeah, I don't think there's one ticket to that. Right. And everybody's going to be different because everybody's body is different. But yeah, there's also physically doing something to, like you said, release is a good, good word. Um, What else should we talk about? You're a realtor and and I'm a stager and we're friends. What should we let everybody know that is going on? Like related to the market? Staging, life. Um, so much talk about the market, and so much people are paying way too much attention to the, what the media is saying. Um, we're out there in the actual market <laughs> working, um, mm-hmm. as opposed to CNBC, who is just looking at data that becomes old data. So, um, you know, we just did a, a townhouse in Raleigh, right, that we staged, and it went just fine. Um, so I think you have to, but, you know. but yeah. you know what I'm going to say? So the way that is, and I work is she is the realtor. She gets a listing. I go and I meet her seller and we walk through the whole house and I say, this needs to go here. What if we did this? Would you consider replacing this 20 year old carpet? What if we updated this red dining room? Things like that. Then I come back according to how long it takes them to accomplish all of those things. And I stage the home to perfection right before photographs are taken. Isabel, being such a smart realtor, always pays for the consultation and the staging. Usually the sellers pay for the staging and the realtor pays for the consultation. But Isabel just takes it and doesn't even want to deal with discussing it with her sellers and just says, I'm taking care of all of it. Lindsay's coming in. And she even says, I will not take a listing unless you allow Lindsay to stage it, which I love. Thank you. Yep. No, it's true. Look at how I'm like Buddha. (laughs) Um, So what I was going to say is with our amazing smoldering partnership, we get houses sold really quick. In the last two years, you have sold all of your listings in what? Four days. Four days. That is my average. The max and then, which is amazing, which is amazing. And they, you know, and that, and that correlates to when we started working together, my dear. So, um, so you're part of that success. But thank you. I love that. I mean, I think you know today. But I, what I'm gonna but hold on. But what yeah. I'm gonna say, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you. I just don't yeah. want to forget what I'm gonna no. say. What um, is that? Look at how the markets changed. And instead of selling that little townhouse that was perfection. In four days, it took two weeks, and that That's is right. the switch and the change. That's the shift. Now, I'm not People trying to be negative. You were going to probably no. say something positive. No. Yeah. No, I mean, you just have to reset expectations. But we are not in this, you know, if you do all the right things, and you know my big thing also, which has nothing to do with you, but it's, it's pricing it correctly. Overpricing of course, of course. is the kiss of death no matter what. Um, no matter what the market overpricing is the kiss of death. Um, even when the market was hot, 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 you got a lot less if you overpriced than if you got it just right. So that's, that's good advice because yeah. what also I want to talk about with that is if you've hired professionals such as Isabel and as your realtor and me as your stager to come in and do what we do, then let us do what we do. Don't tell us that just because you put $150,000 worth of renovations into your home 
that you bought 10 years ago that you think that you can sell it for $500,000 more than what you bought it for. Correct. The Design Time from the Flora podcast is sponsored by Florally, your premier source for designer-inspired floors. Use Florally's live chat with real human beings to answer your flooring questions and even book a free in-home consultation. And we're back. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, I think that I might, you know what I love doing when I'm by myself is going to a movie by myself. Oh, yes. Yeah, so good. Isn't that the best? Is there anything good right now? Oh, I saw the J- the Clooney, Julia Roberts Hi, movie. Roberts. That's what I wanted you to say. It's like right down the street. I love Go. me some Go. Julia Roberts and George Clooney. Yep, yep. It's very predictable, but you know what? They've got good chemistry and they pull it off and it's very entertaining. And also Nothing. a rom-com I will take any day. Me too. Oh my gosh. Me Not too. to mention, I'm not with my husband right now who is going to roll his eyes and be like, Correct. Oh. Correct. There's no need for that. Uh uh-uh. uh. He has never watched The Notebook. I mean, you know. Oh, good. And here's what a sap my adorable father is Dad and I have our own Nicholas Sparks book club. It's just us. <laughs> That's awesome. And it all started with The Notebook. That's and awesome. whenever there's a new book that comes out, we like compete who can get it to each other the fastest and read it and discuss it and and then do you go see the movie when it comes out later we've we don't watch the movies together but I've seen a lot of the movies and a lot of the times I get mad because we were just talking about this the other day true the Bridges in Madison County right great book great movie thank you Meryl Streep and Clint Eastwood but um yeah I'm gonna go see a movie by myself Yay. That's and I'm going to read a book. Yeah, that's good self-care. These are things that I like to do. What does Phoebe call it in Friends? Personal. No, it's not Phoebe and Friends. It's um, Miranda in Sex and the City. I was going to say, you always quote from the Sex and the City. I've never heard you quote from Friends, so I knew you had that wrong. Oh God, I always quote from Friends is like always. <laughs> I, like more... any situation that I'm ever in, I could quote from Friends. Yeah. Well, but just as much sex in the city. Yeah. 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 Those are my faves. Yeah. Um, And it's like my genre of TV shows. I grew up with that. Totally. Um, Totally. She says that like, what is it? What does she call it? Like secret self, like by your, when, what do you do when you're by yourself? And Miranda says that she puts on like lotion and puts the gloves on and then like eats biscuits with butter and jelly on it with the gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> or saltines, I think it was. I don't know. Uh, maybe I've just mixed them both together, what yeah. people said. But... Doesn't matter. What do you do when you're by yourself and you're going to like do something? Um, I'm less apt to go to a movie by myself. I don't know why, but I love to watch a movie by myself at home. And now that we can okay. stream anything at any time, that's, you know, um, right. Yeah. I mean, just being able to watch something with the volume where you want it, no one interrupting you. It's delightful. Glass of wine in your hand. Yes. If that's what you want to do, eating whatever you want to eat. Yeah. It's good. Um, back to the nude aura. <laughs> <laughs> so... With blondes, yeah, you and me, you have that nude aura ish going on. I mean, you're wearing like a creamy, but that could be considered like a nude. Yeah, I mean, that, has nothing to that would be a, 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 a. This is an Irish nude. <laughs> People that never see the sun, you know, or Irish like, nude, northern right. northern British nude. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it really has nothing to do with the nakedness kicked out that I was trying to. Right, 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 right. <laughs> um. So before we took a little breaky break, um, we were talking about the market and right. how if everybody would just. Um, call a realtor and see what they can see and decide for themselves and not watch the old CS, CNBC news that's going to corrupt our minds and souls in the first place. Right. 
says the girl that has yeah. to watch the today show every morning. I mean, we're on the ground. We're the troops on the ground. Don't listen to, you know, the people in the White House. Listen to the troops on the ground. Yeah. Here's the yeah. bad part, though. Mm-hmm. And this is what another um, realtor friend of mine just told me last week that I haven't talked about with you that I would love to talk about with you. Because interest rates have gone up by se- to 7%. It's literally raising your monthly payment almost a thousand dollars. It it is. It's crazy. That is a deal breaker. If I can only spend two thousand dollars because I have three different properties for crying out loud. Right. Another thousand dollars I know. Is, is is I can't do that. Well, that's why it's pushed people out of the market. I mean the people that can still be in the market and I, I hate that for people. I hate, but I also rent will continue to go up. Rents are going up faster than interest rates in a lot of ways. And so at least with an interest rate, you've got probably a 30 year mortgage. You can eventually refinance. If you stay in that rental market, you're going to keep going up. So, but I understand that not everybody can, can buy a house right now because of interest rates. I understand that. Um, and it's sad, but it also has created a lot of opportunities for buyers right now, as opposed to the spring where you had, to, it was a nice fight to get a house. And now I've gotten so many buyers under contract these last couple of months because it's been um, really, there's opportunity. So that's nice. Yes. Agreed. Um, Quoting another realtor friend of mine, because all of my friends are realtors, because that's where I work. Right. Um, And this is a really positive spin on this. Yes, your monthly payment is going to be more. But look at how much the market has changed in that at least you're not having to come up with 50 to 100,000 over asking. Correct. Correct. Anymore like you had to last year. Right. That's right. So there's a positive spin on it. You should say that to everybody. Well, that's what, I mean. well that's what I mean why, by there's more opportunities for buyers and why I've gotten so many buyers under contract recently because you can do a lower due diligence. You don't have to put as much money at risk. You can do an inspection. You can negotiate repairs. All the things that you couldn't do before. If you had a $20,000 in repairs in the spring, oh, well, that's, you were going to be stuck with that. So, you know, how about all yeah. those buyers that were so excited about getting the house as fast as they could that like forego the inspection. Right. And right. now they're stuck in this lemon house that the roof is leaking and the water in the bathroom doesn't work. Why did they do that? Because they wanted it so bad. That's that it was, you know, like I said, it was a nice fight. It's what you had to do. It was it, if you wanted to play, you had to you had to be that aggressive and forego all those things horribly unbalanced horribly unfair we are getting back to you know a balanced market is six months of inventory and right now the triangle is at about one and a half months of inventory so it's still very much seller's market if sellers think oh we've missed the boat no that's not true very much still a seller's market but there's more inventory there's more things to choose from it's not as crazy there's not 50 people that want one house like there was Right. I mean, remember when we did Abby and Dave's house and it was 180 showings and I got 60 offers. I mean, that was insane. 60 for one house over one weekend. It was wild. God, is I forgot about that. Yeah. That was that cute little house that we did yeah. such an overhaul where she was like, she had four children and like pregnant with the seventh. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> not really the math, but yes. And I was like, I know. And I was like, just stop. Just, oh my God, please. <laughs> and they were like ages five to one. Yes. But all the cutest little cherubs you've ever seen. Yep. I know. So cute. And they had the most adorable house. They just house. moved into their brand new construction house that I'm going to get to go see soon. So I oh, can't wait. Oh, I want to see it. Yeah. Well, we'll have to make I want to help her with it because she's got great stuff. Yeah. Like is her whole gray sectional with the um, caramel leather chair. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm like. That's inspiring me 
to decorate my own house whenever I get to move back in with my new right, renovation. Right, right. Yeah. But I love that look. Yeah. I'm really into a solid gray with a caramel texture yeah. and then bringing in a wood element. And then, mm -hmm. then there's black and white pieces. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm really into that. And then yet I'm trying to get away from like all of the reds and turquoises that I love to use. And I'm still kind of doing that in my new place, but it's going to have it's okay. leather. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah. 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 Well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I mean, like, usually we go for longer, but yeah. I don't want to, like, yeah. I think we've had some really good stuff to talk about from self-care to how you spend your time and enjoy yourself and the market sure. and staging and friendship and all the yep. things. All the things that we need to incorporate into our lives. Yep. For sure. Is and I have the kind of friendship where we could be completely sober or completely not and talk for like six hours without even looking at our watches. Yeah. And here I'm like cutting it short. That's true. And really, you know why? It's because I thought that my phone was completely charged and it's got a red thing on it. And oh. I don't know where my charger is because I'm at this condo. Yeah. Might be with the Sorry. key. It's, it's with the key. Yeah. With the key. We're coming back full circle. That key is the key. Always ball. make sure the the moral of this story is always have your charger on hand. Correct. And always have an extra key, even if you think that you're going to know where the spare key is. There we go. Okay, have bye. It. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, my little pod posse. All right. This well, this was awesome. Thanks for having me on. I loved it. You're so welcome. I'll talk to you like right after so we can. Discuss. Okay. All right. Um, bye, Isabel April. Bye. And don't turn it off yet. Don't turn it off yet. I'm not. And this is your host, Lindsay the Stager, coming to you live, Laura Lee Design Time from the floor up. We cover it all. Talk to you next time. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this episode, please like, comment, or subscribe. If you don't like it, then f*** off.